Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a tool called Blur Exterminator. Um, this is a sort of one of three tools um, that work on an artificial intelligence basis by a guy called Ross Russell uh, Croman. Um, and I decided that I'd do this video just to uh, basically sort talk, talk about um, artificial intelligence based tools, a little bit about how they work. Um, but also my views on whether uh, this is cheating or not from an astrophotography perspective. So uh, if you want to uh, hear a little bit more about this tool, uh, how it works, and also uh, my views on these tools, then uh, keep watching. So, um, yeah, talking about tools that uh, use artificial intelligence or commonly known as AI. So the way that these uh, tools work, they, they work differently to uh, how I would say sort of traditional uh, computational algorithmic based software. So with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, to a degree, you don't really tell it sort of what it needs to do. You provide it with a bunch of inputs. There's a thing called a neural network that works in a similar way to the human brain. Um, and you you sort of have some outputs, some expected outcomes that you want from the um, from the input, and you're training this network to behave in a particular way, much the way same way that a, a human um, learns from things. If you do something wrong, you make a mistake. Uh, there's some kind of negative outcome, and you'll go, oh, I won't do that again. Um, or you can train things positively and say, right, okay, you've, you've done this, here's a reward. And so therefore that will strengthen the connections. And that's what you're doing when you're training these neural networks. So uh, Blur Exterminator is a, a, come out right and say it already, is a fantastic tool. And it's working in a very specific part of astrophotography. Um, it says Blur Exterminator. It's essentially doing a thing called uh, deconvolution, which is a process by which um, astrophotographers use already to reduce the, the atmospheric wobble in um, stars and their images and things like that. So um, it's an, an alternative way of looking at solving the same problem, which uh, typically you would use um, with, with deconvolution you'd have to go through a fairly uh, laborious process to get to the outcome, whereas Blur Exterminator turns it essentially into a one-click operation. So I mentioned uh, very briefly deconvolution. So what is that and what's it trying to uh, achieve or work around? So if you think about, um, we have our telescopes um, on the ground, in Earth, in an atmosphere, and we're trying to take images of uh, deep sky objects. Uh, you've got a ton of air between uh, the telescope and the and space and the air moves around and what that does is creates sort of it, it, it impacts the light that's traveling through the atmosphere and it won't hit the same pixels every single time um, so it won't hit the same pixels on your camera but that's actually what you want it to do uh, one solution to this is build Hubble Space Telescope or JWST but uh, we don't have billions of pounds to spend on astrophotography equipment although um, I think we probably try our best to spend a fortune in this hobby. Um, so what you need to do is is to work around that. And there's a certain element in terms of a predictability of, OK, you should expect a star to have a particular shape. And so therefore you can use a tool of deconvolution to be able to um, de-blur your stars, make them smaller um, and sort of work around that particular problem. Um, if anybody out there has actually used deconvolution, it's a pretty complicated process. Um, I've probably done it once or twice. Um, I've got some notes here that I've had to write because I can't actually remember what you need to do. Um, so there are three things that you've actually got to do. Uh, you've got to create a deconvolution mask by copying the luminance of an image. You've got to stretch that to make the mask. Um, you then need to create a local support image, create a star mask, increase the scale to help capture larger stars, reduce truncation and values and all that sort of thing. And then finally, you create a, a point spread function um, and you need to create that in order to then put into your uh, deconvolution tool in uh, something like PixInsight um, to be able to um, counteract the atmospheric wobble, make your stars smaller. And that's a hell of a lot of work 
for something that's just to make your stars smaller and work around atmospheric wobble. So this is where um, Russell's tool comes in, and it's a it's a fantastic tool from the point of view of you don't have to do all of that stuff. You don't have to work out what your point spread function is and use one of the many algorithms that kind of exist um, in order to be able to, uh, to, to deconvolute your images. And I think that's why I, I see this tool as being um, not really like the same things like the Topaz AI um, uh, sharpening tools and things like that, where they potentially, well, they haven't been trained on um, uh, astronomical images. Um, they're more sort of focused on uh, landscapes and various things like that that you might have. So um, this tool is is purely really around um, astrophotography images, all about the stars um, and making sure that you're actually making those stars how they should actually look. So it's not it's not adding something. It's really just um, taking away the effort that it takes in order to be able to sort of create your point spread function to use in the deconvolution tool. So that's the, the, the biggest reason why um, from having a play with the tool, uh, looking at the documentation that Russell's put together, um, I'm actually sort of at a point where I can say, I don't think that this is really cheating. So that's it, that, that was the point of the video. And there we go, there we're done. Um, apologies for the light in the background. For some reason it's, it's flickering, which is a bit annoying. Um, so uh, what I'll do at the end of this video is just sort of show you a couple of um, images that I've had a go with um, and, and sort of you can see the result. I think one of the big takeaways from actually using this tool is if you're uh, using images and you're just displaying them on your screen and you're putting them onto Instagram, you probably won't see the extra benefit of Blur Exterminator, which is to um, take the information that it's gathered in terms of deconvoluting the stars and making the stars smaller and pin sharp it can use that same information to do the same with the nebulosity in the background of the image um, that's all fantastic but if you've got a big uh, or you've got an image and you're just looking at it on the screen then you won't necessarily see that enhanced detail you have to zoom right in to be able to see it so although the tool is is fantastic and it's uh, quite quite well priced at the end of the day um, you won't necessarily always see a big difference in your images. Uh, so then it comes down to personal preference. To be fair, there's an element of actually uh, being just happy to spend $99 on being able to deconvolute your stars without having to go through the sheer amount of pain that is what I just described earlier. One thing I'm really impressed with with the tool as well is um, the compatibility with different operating systems and CPU architectures and things. Um, it supports Windows, it supports Linux, it supports Mac OS. Um, it uh, supports the neural network um, sort of capabilities that's built into the NVIDIA graphics cards these days. But if you're using a Mac and you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card and you've got a an M1 or an M2 based CPU, then it will actually um, utilize the, um, the that specific architecture to do the same thing. So that's really good that, um, yeah, it's gone to the effort of making sure that that works as well, which is, yeah, thumbs up on that one. So I think that's that's pretty much all I've got to say. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, show you some images and you can see the true effect of this um, uh, this enhancement, this plugin um, for yourself. And uh, yeah, put a comment in, um, in the comments below and sort of say what you think about this. Is this cheating? Is it not cheating? Is it actually just another tool for our toolkit? Um, I would say yes, but if you disagree with me, then uh, yeah, put a comment in the in the comments below and we can have a discussion about it. Uh, just show you a couple of different images um, with Blur Exterminator used in it and uh, also where it's not been used. So uh, starting off with uh, this image, this is Lobster Claw um, Nebula. So in terms of processing, it's had very, very little processing. It's still in its linear state. Um, and that's where you need to use this tool. Uh, the idea is that you, it's one of the first things that you're doing while it's still in linear, definitely no noise reduction or anything like that. Um, so just, just remember that when you're using it. And you can see if I just sort of uh, flick between the two different images, um, you can see that the stars are greatly reduced. Um, but unless you've got really, 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 really good eyesight, you probably can't see that much extra detail in the nebulosity area. Um, 
the only time you're ever going to be able to really see that is when you when you kind of zoom in a bit so uh, what we can do now is uh, just kind of zoom into uh, this image and then just switch between the two so this is before and this is after before and after and I'd say it's quite subtle certainly with this particular image um, I think you've got finer definition where where you've got sort of higher contrast areas where it's picking out a bit of detail um, but yeah not not enough that you can actually notice that from a, a, a distance away and then open up uh, the wizard nebula so this is the before and this is the after um, again I really like the what it's done with the stars and the deconvolution uh, process I think that's really good uh, if we just zoom into this as well so this is before and this is after so again you can see um, if you look at this area down here for example um, you can see that there's more definition it's 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 clearer fundamentally if we just zoom in even more so this is before and this is after before and after you can definitely see in this area here and here there's a much more defined level of detail and again going back to the point of is this cheating i don't think this is really adding detail that's not there um, so i'd still firmly class this as a tool um, which is helping you to enhance the image in the same way that when you're using sharpening to a degree i mean um, those sharpening algorithms are just looking for difference in contrast and and making sure that, that difference is more defined rather than uh, uh, a gradual so is is that cheating um so yep i think i'll leave it at that in terms of showing those images um just briefly to show the um, actual blur exterminator control itself um, very simple in terms of the number of controls available to you um, you can play about with sort of how uh, reduced the star halos are how sharp the stars are and then also um, the non-stellar areas so when you're sharpening the the nebulosity and things you can play about with this slider uh, there are also some options here in terms of what you're actually going to be focusing on um, and also some really good documentation uh, provided by Russell as well uh, literally almost like too much documentation but um, yeah it's really good that he's provided all of that because actually some of the other tools within PixInsight are really lacking documentation where I'd say that they really need it so uh, well done Russell there uh, so that's about it for this video uh, just like to thank you very much for watching uh, if you like this video hit the like button um, if you want to see more content like this, then uh, hit subscribe and hit the bell and you'll get notified in the future. Um, and also, uh, thank you very much for everybody who's subscribed to me so far over the past year or so. Uh, it's really very much appreciated and it is a strong level of encouragement for me to continue doing these videos. So uh, thank you very much and clear skies.